Well, hello, everyone, and welcome once again to IAG Trade Talk. I'm your host, Andrew Scott, and we're absolutely delighted today to have the chairman of Bally's Corp, uh, Mr. Sue Kim, with us uh, today to discuss a whole uh, a range of matters. Uh, chairman Sue Kim, welcome to Trade Talk. No, oh, thank you, Andrew, and thanks for having me. Well, uh, we originally talked uh, uh, maybe about a week ago now when uh, there was a press conference there in, in Fukuoka uh, on, I think it was the 30th of March, um, when there was at fairly short notice, um, uh, a notice of a press conference went out to Japanese media and we, we followed it as well. And we were quite surprised as to that because the you know, 28th of April, as I think everyone knows, is the deadline for this process that's been going on for well, many years now, really, there's certainly not time for an RFP or legislative assembly approval. Plus, there also is Nagasaki. So tell us a little about how that came about and um, and how the press conference was called and, and your uh, Bally's involvement. Sure. Yeah. Look, uh, Bally's, we pride ourselves in being pretty opportunistic. Uh, I think one of the reasons why uh, we're one of the fastest growing gaming companies in the state, you know, I mean, again, we went from a single casino to... So we had like four casinos as recently as like three or four years ago. And now we have, you know, 16 and, and, and then we have a large online operation. And so, uh, and the reason for that is, uh, we're pretty active on the, on the, uh, the corporate development side. We're always looking for new opportunities, new markets. Um, and, uh, and frankly, look, a, a, um, uh, I think it was one of the consultants or, or bankers, uh, uh, introduced us to, um, this local, uh, you know, uh, developer slash promoter group um, that wanted to tout the 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 uh, the advantage of Fukuoka. So look, we hadn't really spent that much time thinking about Japan, but we said, hey, look, let's go out there and get a lay of the land. Um, and so, what from our perspective was our, our sort of fact gathering, fact finding mission. I went over with the the president of our casino. Um, uh, casinos and and as well as one of our uh, uh, you know corporate development folks, and uh, it was interesting because um, you know they this group this uh, were were sort of touting that you know that they had this plan and that we were behind it, um, and so that was a little bit of a you know um, you know so apparently it was it was our con press conference which we weren't aware of because we were just asked to come out to a to you know, to to meet with them, and then I guess that somehow there was a press conference. Um, so that was a little awkward. Um, but uh, look, you know, again, uh, the one thing that we came away with is that first of all, um, uh, these promoters, uh, I think they were well intentioned. You know, they 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 had I guess worked on some development projects, real estate development projects in Fukuoka City, and um, and really you know felt strongly and shared that enthusiasm about how much of a better market that this would be than, than, uh, than definitely the other site, which is Nagasaki in the Kyushu area, um, but also um, uh, versus the other you know, IR proposals. Um, and, and so, look, I think it was worth the learning about. You know, I mean, um, you know, uh, you know, look, the law that, uh, you know, that access these IRs, what they were passed, what is it, 16 or something like that? So it's been a while now, right? Um, and, um, and, you know, even despite the fact that that, that process uh, in terms of, you know, all the applications would have to be in by April at the end of this month, um, it does seem to, uh, to us that um, there really aren't three great candidates um, for uh, integrated resorts in Japan. And so, you know, it, it does feel like the, you know, it, it's going to, you know, reopen at some point in some way, shape or form. So, so, um, so at the very least, you know, look, getting to know uh, some of the market participants, getting to understand the lay of the land in Southern Japan, uh, at least, you know, again, from what some angles um, and, and, and feeling like this process um, isn't over. Um, I think that that was all worthwhile doing. Um, I will tell you that, uh, the, the other thing that's really interesting about uh, 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 Fukuoka is that it's so close to um, to Korea, uh, where I was actually born, you know, and it's so close to China or northern China. And and so if you think about trying to create an international destination, it, it geographically, there's a lot of logic to it, you know. Um, 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 but again, at the time we were there meeting with these these folks, 
they're sharing a lot of their enthusiasm, but you know, they didn't they didn't quite tell us that actually that the six prefecture governors of of uh, the, the governors of the six prefectures of Kyushu have all you know were backing this Nagasaki bid. So I didn't really know that. Um, um, later, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, someone sent me articles that were you had written that 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 sort of walked through the whole thing. I'm like, oh, now I understand. You know, like, but we just didn't understand that at the time, and so. Um, um, so it's, it's still early days yet for us. I would say that, you know, maybe that first, uh, you know, that we were somewhat misrepresented, um, um, you know, getting into this, but I, I would just, uh, I would, I don't take any offense. This is stuff that could be lost in confusion. And, um, but I will say that I think that there is a, a strong regional and potential international market in Southern Japan. And it'd be really interesting to, to 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 sort of explore the process further, especially if the government doesn't pick three, you know, operators, um, you know, coming out of this process that begins slash ends in April. Sure. So, uh, well, thanks for the clarification and the explanation on that, because it's certainly, I mean, the the the, the images that came for the press conference with a great big board with a great big Bally's logo. Oh, and, yeah, and, like the step and repeat. It, yeah, that wasn't yeah. us. That wasn't us, you know. And, and um, then there, I think there was every uh, logo from every business in Fukuoka was on that board. Uh, but but uh, there seemed to be hundreds of small logos um, right. of partner organisations, and and, uh, and so it really did. It was almost as though you were being represented as uh, ballets were all behind this, and and uh, probably gave the wrong impression, I guess. Which I mean, I I don't know. I, I won't ask you to name the names yeah. of, of the partner, but perhaps uh, a little bit difficult. Put, put you guys in a bit of an awkward spot, I guess. It, it absolutely did, Andrew. But again, I don't want to be down on these, you know, promoters, you know, I, I really don't because look, they were, they were genuine, they were enthusiastic and they were trying, you know, I think, you know, in some ways, you know, you know, they're, they're, you know there's a little element of the metaphor of trying to rub two sticks together and, and to make fire, to catch fire. And, and um, I think that, um, Look, as we got to know them and, you know, we realized that A, um, that, you know, there really were no connections that they would help us make to the actual city officials, you know, the city council, you know, any of the major businesses and institutions, which are, you know, when you when we're going into a uh, this kind of like, um, you know, governmental processes, you have to have you know, widespread community support. And that community support includes small businesses, which I think that there were a lot of small businesses that came out of this thing. But there, but 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 beyond that, you also have to have institutional support. You have to have, you know, um, you know, the the public institutions come out and 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 be able to you have, at least at, at the very least to be able to communicate with them. And so um, the strangest thing is when you know they presented, oh, this is the perfect place. It's a park, you know. It's currently a park. This is great. It's a park, and and look, you know, we have some experience with uh, uh, with uh, with casino development in the states, and I will tell you that trying to get a, a public park alienated so you can build a private enterprise is one of the hardest, you know, things to do uh, in general in real estate development. So um, that was sort of a red flag. We're like, mm, okay, this is the site that you think is op optimal, like. All right. Well, this is your plan. This is not our plan. Obviously, we're just getting to know the area, the people involved. Um, you know, um, so it's an interesting. It's really, it's a really interesting, uh, you know, market. Um, sure. you know, frankly, the only, the only takeaway we had, um, the probably the only detractor. Now, it, it's funny. Nagasaki is in that area too. And I, if I had, I you know realized my geography correctly and I had a, a little bit more time, I would have probably taken the two-hour journey to go there. You know, to see what was going on there. But, um, you know, the, the, my only observation was that that airport has one runway. And so, um, uh, and it's, it, and it seemed like pretty, you know, pretty tightly, you know, uh, that flight board looked pretty busy. So um, I'm curious to see whether or not it's possible to turn that really into an international resort destination if there's even the slots, you know, so that kind of work would have to be done. I mean, I think, uh, so we'll put all that down to a misunderstanding and kind of start again. Um, but I think it was interesting, a couple of things that you did say um, there. I think a lot of people have said that Fukuoka makes a lot more sense than Nagasaki, even though we have ended up 
with Nagasaki being the, the location for one reason or another. And I think the other thing that I found interesting that you just said just then was uh, there maybe are not three great candidates. And I think that that's the, con the conclusion that we here at IAG have formed. Um, two, three years ago, we had every big IR company under the sun uh, w was all hot on Japan. And one by one, they've all pulled out to the point where we've just got MGM at Osaka and then too much smaller bidders, which frankly to look at would not would not be of the standard that we would or the size or scale that we would normally expect to see um, in Japan, given what we already know about the US and Macau and maybe right. Marina Bay Sands, those kinds of kind of projects. So having having gone or said all that, I mean, if there were, well, there's meant to be a second round in seven years time if the first round goes well, um, if for whatever reason the government did say, look, we're not going to approve Nagasaki, maybe, I mean, one prevailing sort of wisdom at the moment is that MGM Osaka will get approved, but maybe the others won't. And that still leaves two slots. You know, would Bally's Corp be interested in in in, in pursuing Japan and, and doing the work needed, uh, you know, to, to to move ahead in that in that jurisdiction? Sure, absolutely. Look, I mean, um, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, um, 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 you know, we we actually this is the kind of stuff that we actually do at Bally's. Um, uh, we like these sort of orthogonal problems, like, you know, where you can only solve them by just going in a different direction or approaching it from a different direction. Um, um, you know, I, I think part of that is because I'm actually not a gaming uh, uh, executive. I'm really, or I'm not a gaming expert, um, but I am a, 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 you know, a turnaround restructuring investor. Um, uh, gaming happens to be a space that uh, that we've been involved in uh, many, many times because, again, a lot of gaming companies, for, for whatever reason, as strong as the underlying businesses, uh, tend to get in trouble a lot, you know, and maybe because, you know, people overspend, overbuild, overpromise. Um, um, and so, uh, you know, it, it's an industry where we've done well in because there are so many situations that require a different look of restructuring, a reorganization from what the current, you know, the, the current, the original plan was. Now, um, I'll, I'll give you two examples. Well, first of all, we're one of the finalists in the Chicago, uh, uh, you know, casino process here. Um, so, um, in fact, I just got back from a town hall to talk about, you know, what our, 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 our bid to build a, our proposal to bid a, uh, a casino in the city center, which we think is an amazing opportunity. And it's it, it, the thing that's really interesting about that, Andrew, and there's some analogies, is that a lot of people tried and looked, you know, there was, you know, all, all the big operators came and said, hey, we looked at the situation, the politics are not great, and um, and uh, um, and the tax rate is too high, you know? And so uh, what we did is say, well, look, you know, uh, you know, the nice thing about Bally is because all of our portfolio was actually put together opportunistically, we actually do business uh, in the lowest tax jurisdictions in America, which are Nevada and New Jersey, seven and nine percent respectively, um, but we also do business in the highest tax jurisdiction in America, which is um, which is over seventy in in Rhode Island. You know, and we can make money in both you know at these, both of these extremes and in, 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 in states in the middle. And so we know that a a state that has a very high tax uh, 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 prevailing regime. You know, you need to operate in a certain way that's right for that tax regime. It's not right or wrong. It's not, it's not you know, um, there's not one size fits all. It's really, you have to deliver the experience that the tax rate allows. And so um, I think there are a lot of operators, international operators that look at their company and their brands differently. They're say, they say that, look, if I can't build my $3 billion box, I'm not going to put my brand on it, you know? And so um, I think that there are operators that think that way. We are not one of those operators. We think that, hey, you know, the, the Bally's brand and our company are flexible enough where we can make, you know, a small $100 million regional casino work. Um, and we can make a large, you know, billion plus dollar casino work because, you know, we have experience on both ends. So, for, so, so our Chicago process has been really interesting because, again, this is a process, again, the laws were passed years ago. The first round, no one showed up. So they actually lowered the taxes and then ran another round. Uh, they, again, some of the large guys came by in the summer and then made the press releases saying, hey, we're not interested. You know, uh, I think trying to get the tax rate look to be lowered one more time. But we went in on that second round and said, hey, you know what? Um, actually, in this like high 30, 40 range, you know, 
you know, this is actually okay. Now, 70, you know, for Chicago, wasn't going to work because they were also asking for a minimum level of build and taxes. And, you know, so, so, um, but, uh, you know, at the, at, you know, this was a, a tax rate where we can more meet their expectations. And so we were one of, you know, you know, five bidders initially, and now we're one of three. And, you know, look, we're, we feel pretty good about our chances there. So this is an example of, 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 of a second opportunity coming after the first opportunity where we weren't even there the first time, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, um, and we like those situations. We're not really the, 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 the company that likes to participate in, you know, auctions and pay a dollar more than the next person. We're really the person that likes to fix problems that people think that are intractable. And I'll tell you, you know, Japan, you know, attracts me in a lot of ways because you can see, yeah. you can see why, right? You can see why it's the same thing, right? Like, um, um, it was the same thing actually with our purchase of the Tropicana on the Las Vegas uh, Boulevard. You know, this was a property that a lot of people have tried to turn around. You know, ultimately Penn gave it up to their landlord during the crisis, and then their la landlord said, "Hey, we need to sell this thing." And I said, "All right, I'll buy it." You know, and and you know now we're planning to you know essentially level it, and we have some really interesting redevelopment plans for that property. Um, but, uh, but, you know, again, this is a situation where no one wanted it. No one wanted it. So we, we love things that no one wants because if we can get involved in it. And Japan actually, again, feels very similar, right? Everyone, all the big guys have looked at it. They've sort of said, hey, this doesn't work for us, not the way we do business. But look, it's hard to deny that that market isn't large enough, that it isn't well situated, you know, that, you know, that there's a lot of advantages to, to Japan. I, I, again, th th that's why I don't want to be down on these promoters that have brought me out there because I'm like, well, I really appreciate you just showing me around because, and then making me go through the process of, again, reaching out, you know, um, meet, meeting our own, you know, we have our own banking contacts in Japan. We have our own legal contacts in Japan, you know, the, which was, again, you know, allowed me to realize that that was not quite all there eventually, you know, but also, um, uh, um, uh, get a lay of the land of what the opportunity set is, and we think. Uh, look, I would. I'm. I'm going to be around the situation. I want to see what happens. You know, um, uh, because I do think that there's opportunity for valleys um, uh, in Japan. Well, well firstly, good luck in the Chicago process. We've been Thank watching you. that for years. Thank and, you. Uh, hopefully, that, that that works for you. And secondly, uh, y yes, Japan very much is is a place that people have looked at and said, "Look, we don't really we don't really want it. it doesn't work." So maybe that does fit uh, fit nicely. I mean, one just one last question on Japan before I move on to uh, some more general topics. Um, and I suspect the answer may be no, but uh, do you have any sense of if you were to go into that uh, jurisdiction of any of any kind of numbers, GGR numbers, visitation numbers? investment level return any any do you have any sense I've, of that at all yet yeah. we really haven't even done the work it's funny because okay. that they're they were sort of saying that oh we had signed off on a plan we have seen other people's presentations we've now have seen a few different like sort of market studies um look you know one thing is clear um japan if you actually include the pachinko market it might be one of the largest jurisdictions period Anywhere, you know, some people have thrown out numbers like 30 billion, you know, um, huge, you know, and so, um, you know, it, you know, obviously, that's this, you know, really interesting, you know, circular, you know, business where it's not really gambling, it's, you know, it's, it's metal balls, but um, if you can, uh, if you can bring all that to the surface, you know, tax it properly on the behalf of the, the government and the people and you know, I, I think that there's there's a huge amount of potential there. It's obviously, you know, and that's just the domestic market. I mean, again, you know, in a, you know, you, 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 you know, geographically, it's so close to, to 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 Northeast Asia. It is right there. I mean, it's a it's a ferry ride from Korea. Um, yeah. You know, from from many cities in northern China, it's closer than Macau, right? So. So, you know, and, and actually for a U.S. investor, right, a U.S., we're a U.S. corporation, um, you know, in this day, like post the Ukraine, you know, and there's definitely a lot more sensitivity to, to A, who are your other investors, who are your other capital providers, and also, um, especially in the international context, and, you know, where are you investing capital? And, uh, you know, look, Japan 
for an American investor is a very safe place. So um, in terms of the laws and, and you know, the, the long-term relations. Um, and so uh, I think there's a lot of logic to it. Uh, obviously, look, uh, you know, look, we got our first dose of the quote unquote politics. Um, uh, and it was, you know, for us, it's like, wow, we're not really from here. We have to figure this thing out, you know? Um, uh, so, uh, you know, I think it's going to have its own local market challenges, but every local market has its challenges. And, and so um, we're looking forward to trying to understand them. Sure. Um, some of our uh, IAG uh, readers and viewers uh, may be a little confused about the Bally's brand because Bally's sure. people initially think of it, well, it was a slot machine company for a very long time. And that brand's been around for over 100 years, I think. And then, uh, of course, people think of the property on the strip, the Bally's property, which actually Caesars owns, you, don't guys, you guys don't own, and it's going through a name change. Just yeah. tell us a little bit about how did sure. you come to become chairman of Bally's and a bit of the history yeah. of yeah. Uh, just run us through that. Okay. So there's probably there's actually two story arcs that come that come together on this. Um, the first one is that look, Bally's is one of the storied brands of gaming, actually. You know, uh, about a hundred years old, actually started in Chicago uh, as uh, as the Bally Manufacturing Company. And it 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 popularized and made the 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 first sort of hit. Uh, pinball machine. So, you know, I guess prior to there have been in Europe these bagatelle machines, you know, where you would, you'd, you know, a, you know, a metal puck would flow around these metal pins and, you know, try to, you know, you know, and there was a sort of a gambling and a, and a, and a, and a game of chance element to it. But uh, the, the, but the pinball machine, which was, you know, this, you know, this gravity fed, you know, pins and metal ball bearings with holes and scoring that, that, you know, um, that was made initially, I mean, popularized by Bally's, which at the time was, you know, making that as part of other, you know, carnival games. Um, and so the history of that is really interesting. Um, I don't know if you know this, but like, you know, now pinball, pinball didn't have flippers, you know, so what we Americans or American, Americans think what uh, uh, um, uh, pinball is, is a game that look more like an arcade game where it has flippers and you try to keep a ball the same ball, one ball, you know, jumping around and scoring. But actually, um, that's again. There's a lot of branches to the to the to the to the to the to the, to the trunk, you know. And the, but the trunk started at pinball. One of the branches are pachinko, where you know you just take you know the balls just go flying. Um, you know, games like Price is Right, Plinko. I don't know if people grew up in the states. You know, there was this game show Plinko. Um, um, but it, it's such an interesting, and then look, the modern day, you know, uh, uh, slot machine really has, a, you know, actually, um, that also was a precursor to the modern day slot machine, because in the 50s, they, they put electronic scoring on it. And, and uh, actually, I think Mayor LaGuardia in New York City banned the machines for 10 years, um, uh, saying that this was a backdoor gambling, this is gambling, people are keeping score and then paying out based on you know, some, you know, so they banned, they would, they're like the cops, it was just like the prohibition where the cops would take the machines and smash them up and in like the kegs and stuff. It was the same thing, pinball machines, you know? Um, and then later they said there was a game of skill. Uh, so they, they, got, they overturned that, that, um, that prohibition. But um, so it's a really, the pinball machine really is, is integral to gaming in terms of the evolution. And Bally's was the first brand. So it's pretty exciting in that sense, right? Bally Manufacturing Company went on to, you know, making actual slot machines, pinball machines, arcade games, you know, gyms, casinos, amusement parks. So it actually became one of these like 1970s, like conglomerate companies, uh, all under the Bally's flag. Um, and at one point, you know, look again, like, you know, the Bally's in AC was a big deal. That was, you know, boardwalk and park place, right? And and obviously, Bally's had a presence in, in, in Vegas as well. Um, at one point, I think Bally's was actually the largest gaming company. It was, like, you know, for, you know, sometime in the 80s, I think for a hot moment, it was the largest gaming company in the world. Um, so uh, uh, obviously, at this point, though, that that core is all part of Caesars, right? You know, so, uh, you know, um, now a while ago, they separated out the equipment business. And that's part of now a company called Light and Wonder or Scientific Games, right? Um, that went over with Bally's equipment and, you know, um, 
So, and so the brand has been split somewhat. Okay. Now remember when we've been buying, so now that's that arc. Okay. But it's a wonderful brand. Okay. Now the other arc is that, you know, we've been buying all these casinos opportunistically in America sort of, and, and, and what, at one point we had 16 casinos with 16 different names, <laughs> like, you know, which I always knew was uh, with a, with a transitional state, because I was like, look, I want to have, at some point I'm going to have one name for our whole company. And I don't know what that name is going to be, but I'll know it when I find it. You know what I mean? You know, when I see it, when I see the right name, I'll be like, all right, we're, we're going to do that one, you know? And when we had an opportunity to buy Bally's Lang City, we asked the Caesars folks, hey, would you sell us the brand? And, and look, after a negotiation, they agreed to do it. So, it was, so that was exciting because frankly, look, Caesars is a multi-brand company, has Harris, Horseshoe, you know? And so, you know, this was like the fourth brand in their, you know, in the, in the grandma's attic, right? And they weren't using it. Um, and, um, and so um, it, it gave us an opportunity to, to buy the brand along with the casino. You know, uh, eventually we had a sense that they were going to take the brand off the, the, the what, what, what is the Bally's in Las Vegas. But again, we had a plan to bring that back to Las Vegas anyway. Um, and now we've branded all our casinos with Bally's and we've brought it back, you know, so it's really exciting. And actually just it's funny, now we're bidding on the casino in Chicago to bring Bally's back to Chicago, you know? So it's a wonderful, if you think about, um, again, it's one of the, now we own the global mark, you know, as part of that. Uh, but the only place we don't own it is for the manufacturing of casino games. So, so that is still owned by, um, you know, uh, now Light and Wonder. But I'll tell you, the scientific games has already been, you know, obviously they used to go by Bally's and, you know, Bally's iView. And, you know, they're using that trade name for a long time. But I, I feel like, you know, just they've been, even before our own branding efforts to rebrand uh, the company and revive the brand, uh, they've been moving away from it on their own. So I don't know, at some point we got to go reach out to them and say, hey, you, you know, would you let us unite the brand? Um, but, um, but anyway, so we're, look, we're really excited to bring that brand back, you know, both physically as well as look again, you know, um, you know, these opportunities like, you know, like Japan, you know, like, you know, if you think about what Bally's, uh, you know, uh, as a precursor to Pachinko, it, it's sort of like, it's this weird, like, whoa, maybe this is meant to happen kind of thing, you know? Um, mm. anyway, um, I actually have in my office here, um, uh, 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 the original slot machine. I'm going to, let me see if I can show you this. This is kind of a funny, funny thing. But if you look, if you look here, like, do you see that? Like, yeah. this yeah. is the, this is the machine, right? And like, right. Uh, right. you know, and, and, and again, there's no flippers, right? You know, and there's, and there's scoring. And then the machine is called Ballyhoo, you know, and that's, and the, and the company took the name of the machine because it was such a popular machine. Again, amongst the many, you know, bargain basement purchases we've made, um, this brand might be one of the, the finest in, 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 my, in my career. So uh, I'm excited to revive it and bring it back to, uh, you know, you know uh, prominence. Uh, it, it is a brand that is one of the grand old brands of gaming. And, um, and, uh, you know, look, the first video games were Bally's, you know, like, you know, Space Invaders were Bally Midway, you know, and that also was a partnership between Bally's and Japanese companies, you know. Um, so it's just like, a, there's just, I don't know, there's a weird confluence here, you know, and uh, cool. that would be cool. interesting to bring it back. So, and, and, and uh, in the last few months, Caesars have announced that um, they'll be rebranding what was Bally's back yeah. in, in the Horseshoe, because, of course, they acquired the Horseshoe downtown and right. really what they were after was the WSOP and they, they'll be again moving yeah. the WSOP into there. So, I mean, I, get, I guess, will you be rebranding the TROP as, um, as Bally's? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I think that that's a great, that's a great thing for us. Uh, we're happy that they've done it. And... Um, and uh, and look, it allows them to consolidate their brand. And yeah, when we when we redevelop the trop, which we will, you know, we were still working on the plans, and we'll announce at some point. Um, Bally's will be our go-to-market brand there. Yes, absolutely. Cool. So, so in addition to these sixteen um, land-based casinos, you also had the the online part of the business, the acquisition that you made last year sure. on Game Biz. Tell us a little bit about about that acquisition. Sure. Yeah. Look, again, uh, we are a unique company in the sense that uh, in gaming, because we are almost equal parts of physical gaming and online gaming. And so I don't think that, you know, we're like sort of an odd duck in that sense, but mostly because I have this generalized belief that gaming is gaming and, and, uh, and, 
we physical operators better understand online. And I think that, you know, I, I think that, you know, I think there are a lot of online operators that like, oh, we would never touch physical, but I don't think that that's right either, you know? I think that they, I think it's just gaming and I think there are certain advantages and certain complements that each of the businesses can have to each other in the long run. So we want to control our own future and our own destiny there. So we did a merger with a company called Gamesys based in the UK um, and uh, it, you know, has a very, uh, you know, it, you know, the UK um, uh, is their largest market, but they're all, they operate all over internationally, uh, both on the B2B and the B2C level, um, you know, making and operating um, and providing, um, you know, iGaming, bingo, um, uh, and poker, uh, um, and they're very good at it. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it, in the UK, it was, you know, a top five operator. Um, uh, it still is a top five operator in terms of, you know, absolute size. Uh, it's actually the, the operator amongst the, it, it, amongst the top 10, it's the only one that doesn't lead with sports. Um, um, it's got the highest margins of the group. Um, and, and because, you know, I gaming is more profitable than sports betting, you know? And so, um, so yeah, so I feel like with the acquisition of GameSys, we become a technology company, you know, it comes with over a thousand developers. We can, we can evolve our own product over time internally, which I think is important, you know, which I think is really important. And please correct me if I'm wrong, but I, from memory, I think that was a two billion pound acquisition, wasn't it? Uh, I think it was. Uh, yeah, it was a three billion dollar. Yeah, so two and two and change billion pound acquisition. Exactly, and it was seventy five percent cash and twenty five percent stock. So, so the founders of Games, is including Noel Hayden, is now you know the the third largest shareholder of of Bally. So you know he's a. I'm, I'm proud that he's a partner of ours and. Um, and uh, you know he's he's a legend. He's been in online game for twenty years um, and built games as you know um, you know from 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 nothing. So uh, it's pretty exciting to be partners with him. Um, well, well, I think that's um, definitely. I mean, the, the way of the future and uh, is, is is online game and and more moreover the convergence of online and land based game. I, I think, think that's right. I just think that there yeah. won't be there won't be these uh, you know sort of arbitrary uh, you know oh. We don't do that, you know. Mm. Do you do gaming for your customers? Well, yes. Yeah. So, well, you want to go where your customers are, and if they want to come physically, you'll do that. If they want to bet online, you'll do that. I think just, I just think you just have to go where the customers are. Sure. And just um, lastly, tell me. I mean, obviously, with a name like um, Sue Kim, it's obviously a very Korean name. Um, you've got you've got a Korean. I can guess. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, Korean um, uh, background. We we IAG. We have a lot to do with Korea. So uh, yeah. in paradise up there, and uh, Seven Luck, and so forth. And uh, pre pandemic, I'd go there at least <laughs> once or twice a year. Tell us a little bit about your background. You said you were born in uh, in Korea, sure. but New York is your hometown, right? You yeah, yeah. So oh, yeah, no, absolutely. So I was born in Seoul. Um, so um, and I immigrated to America uh, uh, when I was five years old. So. You know, look, Korean is my first language, you know, um, and, uh, in, you know, I, you know, you know, I don't even have an uh, American English name. Right. So I just have a Korean name. Right. So so, um, um, you know, so uh, most of my parents, family are still in Korea. Um, 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 and uh, and so, yeah, I mean, it's uh, so I, I actually, you know, obviously I feel I feel, you know, strong ties to both. You know, my you know, that's where I'm from It's where. My grandparents are buried, you know, um, and uh, versus, you know, but I also grew up in New York City. Uh, and so I feel very connected to America as well. So it's like, you know, I'm an American immigrant, and, you know, so I'm a hyphenated American, Korean American. So um, it is, look, it's not, you know, again, uh, uh, when it comes to speaking, if you think about the whole circularity of it all, you know, in the same way, it's like, wow, it's really bizarre that, you know, Bally's in some ways, you know, has such a tie to pinball and this history of gaming and, and that sort of ties back to, to Japan in a way, but but uh, also that southern Japan area is physically really close to Korea. And I right. think you know if you think about the whole um, the history of Japan, that's the area where all the international trading occurred. So there were ties to Korea. There were ties to you know the, the Dutch. You know there were ties to all sorts of you know international um, you know trading. Um, and so. Uh, yeah, look, I mean, it's, you know, I think, you know, look, I, I, I am, you know, most of my, uh, you know, investing, my career has been here in the States and, you know, most of my investing 
um, uh, is domestic uh, because you know we understand what the laws are and 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 then the companies that operate here. But look again, as the companies get larger and explore international opportunities, uh, again, it's not lost upon me that it would be kind of cool to to you know sort of like a weird like full circle thing that if we're right. to be involved in the, in a in a casino that has you know Korean customers or near the Korean market. Um, you know, it's kind of a neat, neat, neat thing. I don't know for, for, for lack of a better word. So, um, um, I think there actually is a reasonable size, you know, Korean Japanese community, um, in, especially in Southern Japan. And so, um, so yeah. yeah, so it's just like, there's a lot of, you know, odd confluences here. Um, and, uh, and look, if we can, I just think it's a really interesting market and I'm glad that we have seen it now. It's still again early days in terms of how 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 it's going to shape up and how it's going to play out. But we like complexity. We actually seek it out. Um, um, it's what it's what attracts us. It's you know the straight auctions, uh, you know, the guy that shows up with the biggest wallet. That stuff does not attract us. That's for somebody else, you know. But the thing that everyone looked at and say, hey, this is a knot that cannot be untied. There's not a you know we like oh let's get involved in this. So so yeah so um, look I I don't know if. Um, you know, uh, of being of Korean descent, you know, I, you know, I obviously I, there was a time when that, that probably would not have been a great thing in, in Japan, but I actually suspect that now it's not, that I, I think it's probably the other way. You know, I think that, you know, um, you know, uh, I, I think, you know, at least culturally, you know, there's, there are a lot of similarities and, you know, obviously, you know, it, it's, it's been, it's been um, being of Korean descent, and, you know, um, uh, it's been this weird journey, you know, because, uh, Andrew, like when I immigrated to the States, I was almost embarrassed about being Korean in some ways. Right. Because like, you know, they were like, oh, Korea, that's like the land of cheap cars and cheap, you know, TVs and, you know, you know, where they make the Nikes, you know, because it's cheap, you know. And so like we're like, oh, I'm out of there, you know, like I got to make it in America. And and um, and that's sort of like, I don't know, it's just a weird, you know, just, I guess it's just sort of, you know, the, the kind of uh, a, a viewpoint you have when you're sort of stuck between uh, places, you don't belong either place, right? Um, but, but, uh, but, but now what's been disorienting is that everything Korean is cool. Like there's K-pop and BTS and, and uh, Korean movies like Parasite and dramas and, it's, and food everywhere. I'm just like, this is bizarre, okay? Because... In some ways, in my head, I'm like, wow, Korea is like backward, not cool. And actually, when I left in 1980, it wasn't that cool. You know, it was like, you know, I think it just like, I think it was just 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 getting past being a military uh, uh, junta and, mm -hmm. uh, and actually still being run by a guy that was a former military guy. So, so, you know, you know, uh, you know, it, it wasn't um, it wasn't, you know, uh, there wasn't anything good about it. You know, it was second world, you know, it, it, and uh, look, I. <laughs> I, I grew up going to my grandfather's farm, you know, going to his outhouse. Okay. So um, I hated the outhouse, let me tell you, because it, it was flies and felt like I was going to fall in, you know, uh, into the hole. And, 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 um, and so if you think about my own personal journey, if, you know, it's like, it's like the Virginia Slims that we've come, we've come a long way, baby. I mean, it's, it's 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 nuts, but the country itself has too. I mean, you go to Seoul now, Absolutely. and it's like literally the picture of modernity. I mean, it's like it's like Tokyo, and and it was not like that when we left. And so you know, and now I you know I go back every so often to see family and and friends, and it's it's actually it it makes me proud, you know, that how how far we've come. Um, it would be fun in a way. Again, this is like look, I invest to make sure I I make my investors money. But um, in, uh, from a personal sort of narrative perspective, it would be kind of interesting to invest in a way that, that would impact those markets. Well, don't forget Squid Game as well in that list of things that... Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it's insane. Again, it's like, I don't even understand, you know. People are like, random people are like, you know, coming up to me and saying uh, Korean phrases. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Well, we've seen, I mean, even, even just in Incheon, uh, the developments that's happened in Incheon around the airport there, it's gone from being... Um, a wasteland there to now being you know its own city basically oh, yeah. it's pretty incredible yeah. oh yeah i think there's isn't there like sort of like a failed uh casino uh a thing happening around there i think so right oh yes that, 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 that's another story for another day yeah that's another story yeah. exactly exactly well again that's one that i just know of but i have not seen at all but again like normally when something goes bad i get a call so i, I assume i get a call <laughs> somewhere, you know so I'm, the, I'm the guy that call when they, when no one else wants it you know 
that sounds like a, a, an opportunistic investor, which is exactly what you described yourself as. So that's what we try to do. Yeah. Well, exactly. it's been fantastic. Thank you very much for your time. And thanks very much for uh, explaining a bit more about our uh, bellies to uh, Inside Asian Gaming uh, audience. And um, we'll, I'm sure we'll be hearing more of you. So uh, Chairman Sue Kim, thanks very much for your time. Andrew, thank you. Uh, appreciate it. And, uh, and look forward to continuing the dialogue. And we'll see all of you next time on IAG Trade Talk. That's bye for now.